an incredible piece of Australia's wartime history is being restored in Werribee and needs your support. Tell us about the importance of the Liberator in uh, Australia's war history. Well, when the Japanese entered the war, Australia felt very vulnerable and they were coming down through the islands, coming down towards New Guinea and they cast around to see what sort of aeroplane they should have as a bomber and the government chose the B-24 because of its long range. It could fly 4,700 kilometres with a full load of bombs, full crew and completely armed. Of course the drawback there is no fighter could go with it so it had to be very heavily armed. But during the Second World War it was used very widely out of the northern part of Australia to prevent the Japanese resupplying their troops. So Tony, this is the cockpit of a Liberator bomber? Yep. This, is, this represents what the pilot and the co-pilot um, operated the aircraft with. And who were, the, who were flying these? How old were the blokes flying? The guys would start flying around about 19 to 20 years old after they had gone through the training camp up in Tokemol in uh, New South Wales. The company built 18,000 Liberators, wow. Consolidated built 18,000 Liberators. And in actual fact, at the peak of production, they were producing one every 59 minutes. Wow, that's not, whereabouts? Over in America, there was five factories over in the States that were spread out all over America. The thing I love about this display, Tony, is the fact that it doesn't uh, have signs saying no mm. touching. You encourage kids of all ages. I encourage kids of all ages. Hop in, yeah. feel the levers. And some of the kids are 80 odd years old, yeah. <laughs> you realise that there is a lot to it, isn't there? There's oh, there is. It's, it's a constant task. Um, the aircraft could alter itself, you know, within five minutes and the whole thing had to be, could be had to be reset, so you had to know exactly where your switches and your buttons were. Uh, your engines had to be synchronised along with your propeller uh, rotation, RPM. So it was a constant job. <clears throat> in a current aircraft, you're, uh, you know, with the automated computers and stuff, and you can sit back and just watch. On this aircraft, you couldn't. We work on a five-year plan. Our current five-year plan is to have the plane completely finished. But we cannot do that unless we get funding. We uh, have never had any state or federal government funding at all. We rely on benefactors. If we need something that's pretty expensive, we go to our benefactors and ask them for the money. Uh, this has always been successful, but unfortunately these people were people that flew these aeroplanes during the Second World War or crewed them. And uh, they're just getting so old now that uh, they're passing on and their families try to help us. But really, if we could get somebody that's a patron that could organise funding for us, we'd be very happy. We have tried to get uh, patrons to come and help us to locate sources of income, but people seem to be reluctant to take us on. Thanks for that, Tony. Get down here, have a look at the Liberator. You might find yourself moved to give Tony and the boys a donation to help them finish this very worthy project.